ओम भूरभुव स्वह तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गु देव सीम दियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 दिस इज वीडियो नंबर फाइव ऑन द वेदास एंड उपनिषद एंड द नॉलेज कंटेंट इन दैम टॉपिक ऑफ दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट विद सच्चिदानंदा एग्जिस्टेंस नॉलेज ब्लिस एब्सोल्यूट द वेदांता फिलोसफी ऑफन डिस्क्राइब ब्रह्मा बाई द टर्म सच्चिदानंदा ये कंपाउंड कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ थ्री वर्ड्स सत्य एग्जिस्टेंस रियलिटी और बींग चित कॉन्सियसनेस और नॉलेज एंड आनंदम ब्लिस This term, however, does not appear in any of the principal Upanishads, though Brahma is often described in them by such separate terms as reality, consciousness, and bliss. He perceived that bliss is Brahma, for from bliss these beings are born. By bliss, when born, they live. into bliss they enter at their death brahma is a reality consciousness and infinity brahma is knowledge brahma is knowledge and bliss the brahmadarnya ka upanishad ask us to worship brahma as prajna consciousness as satyam truth and as anandam bliss nevertheless it is only in the minor upanishads that the compound term satchidananda occurs as an epithet of brahma in this epithet meant to apply to the unconditioned nirguna brahma or to saguna brahma brahma with attributes according to some the words of sat chit and anandam refer to saguna brahma according to others to nirguna brahma the former group contains that the words are positive characterizing terms and therefore cannot be implied in connection with the supreme brahma which is to be described as we have already seen only by negation the supreme brahma is neither being nor non being neither consciousness nor matter neither happiness nor unhappiness when the light has risen there is no day no light night neither existence nor non existence shiva the blessed one alone is there likewise consciousness is denied in the supreme brahma it is one and without a second nothing exists besides how then can brahma be consciousness in the absence of an object when there is a duality then one knows another but when the self alone is all how should one know another in reply it cannot be contended that the supreme brahma knows itself that it is both subject and object for as sankracharya says the non dual atma cannot be at the same time both the knower and the object of knowledge since it is partless it is unreasonable to apply simultaneously the notion of knower and object of knowledge to what is incorporeal and finally for the same reasons anandam cannot be an epithet appropriate to the brahma without attribute according to this school therefore the epithet satchidananda can apply only to saguna brahma the great lord maheshwara who by means of maya becomes the creator preserver and destroyer of the universe but according to the other view satya chit and anandam can very well refer to the attributeless brahma 
for these words are used it is declared in a negative sense sat indicates that brahma is not non being chit that brahma is not nisant and anandam that brahma is not a mere absence of pain by such denial the positive nature of brahma as the absolute is affirmed brahma does not exist as an empirical object for instance like a pot or a tree but as absolute existence without which material objects would not be perceived to exist just as a mirage cannot be seen without the desert which is its unrelated substratum so also the universe cannot exist without brahma further when the vedantic process of negation is followed step by step to its conclusion these there remains a residuum of existence or being no object illusory or otherwise could exist without the foundation of an immutable existence and that is brahma therefore the term sat or existence as applied to brahma is to be understood as the negation of both empirical reality and its correlative unreality the chit or consciousness of brahma unlike the consciousness of the mind is not related to an object that chit is absolute consciousness which illumines the activities of the senses and mind during their states of waking and dreaming as well as their inactivity in dreamless sleep likewise anandam or absolute bliss must be understood as the negation of the happiness that we ordinarily know or experience from the contact of a sense organ with its object it may be likened to the bliss that accompanies a deep sleep when the distinction of subject and object is effaced and when therefore empirical consciousness itself ceases to function the knower of truth always experiences this bliss devoid of the relationship of subject and object sat chit and anandam existence consciousness and bliss then are not attributes of brahma but its very essence brahma is not endowed with them brahma is existence itself consciousness itself and bliss itself in the absolute there is no distinction between substance and attributes sat chit anandam denote the same entity when one of them is present the other two are also present absolute being is absolute consciousness and absolute bliss let us see therefore what the upanishads have to say about these separate epithets of brahma since as we have mentioned the compound term does not appear until a later period of vedantic thought brahma as a sat existence in describing the true nature of brahma the upanishads frequently use the term satyam which means truth reality being existence brahma is being consciousness and infinity in the beginning my dear there was that only which is one only without a second it is the true it is the self and though and thou o sweet kritu art it there are to be sure passages in the upanishads which state that non being was in the beginning in the beginning all this was non existent 
it became existent it grew it turned into an egg this universe in truth in the beginning was nothing at all there was no heaven no earth no atmosphere this being that was solely non being conceived a this me i be as early as the rig veda it is said of the primal condition of things that at the time there was na asat na yo sat neither non being nor being but in these text non being is used in the sense of non manifestation there is to say before the creation of names and forms these things existed only in an unmanifested state the word sat being in the rig veda signifies empirical being non being in the absolute sense cannot be in the beginning in the beginning my dear there was that only which is one only without a second others say in the beginning there was that only which is not one only without a second and from that which is not that which is was born but how could it be thus my dear the father continued how could that which is be born out of that which is not no my dear only that which is was in the beginning one only without a second the word beginning agree in the text quoted above does not denote time it indicates dharma in its purest essence unassociated with the upadhis of creation preservation and destruction dharma is beyond time time space and causality belong to maya not only before creation but always dharma is pure consciousness one and without a second its secret name is satya saya satyam the truth of truth this remarkable statement points out that dharma alone is ultimate reality and that the reality of the tangible universe is only apparent and derivative the empirical reality of things is derived from the absolute reality of dharma as the apparent reality of mirage is derived from the reality of the desert the universe is transitory perishable and changing dharma on the contrary is eternal undecaying and immutable what is the meaning of empirical reality an empirically real object is indeed non real like a dream it has not existed in the past will not exist in the future but exist only at the time it is perceived or it existed yesterday but does not exist now or it does not exist now but may come into being tomorrow an object perceived in the waking state may not be seen in dreams or what is seen in dreams may not be seen in the waking state or in deep sleep such an object is said to be empirically real but is ultimately unreal and non existent that which does not exist in the beginning and in the end is necessarily so non existent in the middle objects are like the illusions we see still they are regarded as if real but dharma alone as being exist always in the past present and future in the beginning all this was atma only one and without a second atma alone is all this the word this in the text quoted above denotes the tangible universe according to the upanishads this transitory and empirical universe 
when free from mala which as will be explained later is the cause of the manifestation of the diversity of names and forms is brahma alone brahma is the very root of the universe seek after its root which is the true yes all these creatures my son have their root in the true they dwell in the true they rest in the true everything perceived is in a sense brahma alone all this is verily brahma the multiplicity that people take to be real is not truly so there is no second thing separate from it which it can see through the mind alone purified by knowledge is to be realized there is no differentiation whatsoever in brahma he goes from death to death who sees in it as it were differentiation what then is this duality or multiplicity whose reality the upanishads so vehemently deny in order to demonstrate the soul reality of brahma this duality is maya if the manifold universe had real existence one could then speak of its disappearance this duality is only maya non duality alone is real duality is but an appearance perceived as real when the truth is hidden but gyante devatam na vidyate when the truth is revealed quality does not exist duality does not exist all experiences in the empirical world are maya when there is a duality as it were then one smells something one sees something one hears something one says something the phrase as as it were eva is the very crux of the upanishadic instruction regarding the universe and our daily life in it whenever the upanishads seem to concede the reality of the world even in the slightest degree the phrase at as it were is to be added for anything other than brahma is an appearance only in the chandogaya upanishad there is a celebrated scene in which the sage aruni gives instruction to his son shweta ketu says the father since you are so conceited considering yourself so well read and so stern my dear have you ever asked for that instruction by which we hear what cannot be heard by which we perceive what cannot be perceived by which we know what cannot be known what is that instruction sir asked the son aruni replies my dear just as by one cloud of clay all that is made of clay may be known the difference vikara being only a name arising from speech but the truth being that all is clay and just as my dear by one nugget of gold all that is made of gold may be known the difference being only a name arising from speech but the truth being that all is gold even so my dear is that instruction the effect apart from the cause is nothing but a name a mere matter of words it is in a sense the name the same as the cause we distinguish the effect from the cause by superimposing upon the latter a name and a form to serve a practical purpose of life in the empirical world this name and form apart from the substratum is maya practically one may see a gold bracelet or a gold earring and the difference between them 
but in truth they are only gold. It is the same with the ocean and its waves, which are identical in essence. Likewise, the non-dual Brahma alone appears as the universe and its objects, just as from the standpoint of name and form one distinguishes between a bracelet and an earring. So also from the standpoint of name and form one makes distinctions between the various objects of the world, yet all are in reality Brahma, for, for nothing whatsoever exists but Brahma. If a man believes that he sees something other than Brahma, he is being deceived by an illusion. What an ignorant person, a victim of Maya, regards as the universe endowed with names and forms and characterized by the interplay of the pairs of opposites is realized by the illumined soul to be the non-dual Brahma, just as the water of a mirage which is seen by a deluded man is realized by a knowing person to be dry sand. But Sansara or the relative world as such, the openness of the ones is not Brahma or ultimate reality. Time, space and causation which are projected by Maya create Sansara and account for its unreality. Maya itself is unreal. The perception of difference is the cause of fear and grief. The Brahmin rejects one who knows him as different from the self. The Akshatriya rejects one who knows him as different from the self. The world reject one who knows them as different from the self. The gods reject one who knows them as different from the self. The beings reject one who knows them as different from the self. The all rejects one who knows it as different from the self. This Brahmin, this Akshatriya, these worlds, these gods, these beings and this all are the self. That which is the subtle essence, the root of all in it, all that exists, has its self. It is the true, it is the self and thou, O Svetketu, art it. There are passages in the Upanishads which, in order to emphasize the soul reality of Brahma, describe all objects as its manifestations or expressions. As a spider moves along the thread that it produces and as from a fire Tiny sparks fly in all directions, so from the self emanates all organs and all the worlds, all gods, all beings. This Dharma, this Indra, this creator, all these gods, these five great elements, earth, air, space, water, fire, and all these small creatures, these other creatures, these seeds of creation and these egg born, these womb born, these sweat born, these earth born, horses, cows, men, elephants and whatever else breathes and moves or flies as well as whatever is immovable, these all are guided by knowledge prajanam and supported by knowledge. The universe has knowledge for its eyes. Knowledge is the foundation. Knowledge is Brahma. Since the apparent multiplicity is in a sense Brahma, one must understand Brahma to understand the universe by the realization of the self. My dear, through hearing, reflection, and meditation, all this is known. The rishis of ancient times endowed with the knowledge of Brahma confidently declared their omniscience. 
great householders and great knowers of the Vedas of olden times who knew this declared the same saying, No one can henceforth mention to us anything that we have not heard, perceived or known. Therefore, Brahma, absolute being, is ultimate reality. The whole universe is filled by this person, Purusha, to whom there is nothing superior, from whom there is nothing different, than whom there is nothing smaller or larger, who stands alone, silent as a tree, established in his resplendent glory. So I end this video here. Next video number six will start with Dharma as a Chit Consciousness. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks my dear friend. Namaskar.